Good morning. How are you today? Hoping that you are having a fabulous morning, enjoying whatever atmosphere you're in. I'm praying that you are in a place of peace, of solace, that you're ready to enter in this morning to worship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow, it's been quite a week, <laughs> to say the least. I think I've been saying that a lot uh, these past few weeks. God is clearly at work and he has a lot in store for you and for your families and your loved ones. Um, so right now, I would just ask you to, to allow yourself to be in a place to receive this morning. Um, my name is Pastor Deborah Davis Bell and I am your pastor here at Mountain Creek. And I welcome everybody here this morning, whether you are a member, a regular attender, um, whether you're someone who lives locally or in different parts of the world or, um, in, or this country, you are welcome here this morning. Uh, I've been dialoguing with a few people who have said, yes, I am listening in on Sundays. So even though I can't see who you are, uh, it's a blessing to know that you have chosen today to come and to worship with me and the members at Mountain Creek and to fellowship. And we are all one. So this is no us and them and uh, big eyes and little yous. We are all on the same accord. Amen. So this morning, why don't we go ahead and open up in prayer and then I will share with you. Um, uh, we have a, some special guests this morning and I'm excited to share with you what is happening on, on their end of the world. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for these, your people who are gathered in your name. We thank you for yet another day that you've blessed us to see that we've not seen before. And God, we realize that it's in you that we live, that we move, that we have our being. And I am elated this morning because you are my Lord and my savior. And I pray that your people everywhere, no matter what they're going through, would experience the joy of the Lord. Because why? The joy of the Lord is our strength. It is because of you, oh God, that we are able to live and to move and to exist and to breathe and to exhale and to inhale. Oh God, so much, so much that we take for granted, but nonetheless, by your grace and your mercy, you lead us and you guide us. So will you have your way this morning? Will you have your way and say what you wanna say? Do what you wanna do, move how you wanna move. We are your people. Our ears are open, our hearts are attentive, and we're ready to receive from you this morning. So will you please, Lord, fill our cups until we need no more. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. And so uh, this morning, we are not gonna have a, a call to action, so there's no posting um, today, and I don't know when I'll start doing that again, but I'm one of those who firmly believes that um, if it's meant to transition onto something else, then let's just let that be. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I'm thinking it's just, that's just a season that we have been in and we're kind of looking at doing something different. But in the meantime, today, I introduce to you, uh, you some of you I'm sure know, uh, Leroy and Amanda Ray, who um, has been, have attended Mountain Creek, um, from what I understand in the past. And so um, currently they are residing in Uganda. And so um, they have uh, been missionaries in, um, in North, Northern Uganda for um, a number of years, for eight years. They were initially called to churches in South Sudan, but civil war forced them out of, the, out of that country. And so they are now working with, um, or have been working with Sudanese war refugees and are um, 
currently in northern Uganda, um, just below the, the border with South Sudan. And they are now ministering to churches, to several churches that are in that area. So um, we've supported them at Mountain Creek for quite some time now. And um, they've actually, when they attended Mountain Creek, um, actually, um, from what I understand, were teachers or leaders to um, Alex, who is um, another one of the, our missionaries who's in Peru. So um, without further ado, I want to introduce you to Leroy and Amanda Ray, and we will listen to what they want to share with us this morning. Blessings. Start the video. There. I think we're on. Hey. Thank you so much, Pastor Deborah. It's really good to be with our friends and family at uh, Mountain Creek. Greetings from Kaboko, Uganda. We are sitting one mile from the border with Congo, 12 miles from South Sudan in the country of Uganda. <clears throat> and we would like to first of all say thanks so much uh, for supporting us for the last seven years. Um, God has really done a lot through the faithfulness of the Mountain Creek. And even going further back than that, it was uh, back in 2002 that we got our first push into the mission field, especially in East Africa um, from Mountain Creek. So we really owe a lot to you. Currently, we've been staying in the town of Kaboko for uh, four years and we're really seeing the benefit of being in one community for that length of time. We have uh, founded a ministry called Truth is Light, and our motto is to teach the truth and be the light. Our vision is to empower the church through developing leaders who carry Jesus' light into dark places. And our mission statement is helping people to do what is right, building them up in the Lord through discipleship, children's ministry, counseling, prison ministry, community health, agriculture, and women's ministry. We are currently uh, teaching disciple groups among three uh, village churches. Our children's ministry team has children's groups that are in seven village churches. And we're writing, uh, Amanda and I, writing discipleship curriculum in English. And one of our team members, Baba Moses, uh, translates it into Kakwa, the local language. And people are really happy to get that material because it's, other than the Bible, about the only written uh, material available in their language. So uh, that's a little bit about what we're doing. We will um, be around in the going deeper time. Uh, to have some more interaction with all of you that are online for the service this morning. Um, maybe Amanda wants to say hi. And this is Hi, Tarazi. this is our new addition. Say hi. She's about two months old right now, and we are very excited to have her. So I hope you guys are all blessed this morning. And we'll hand it back to you, Pastor Deborah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, Leroy and Amanda and Taraji. Uh, congratulations on your newest addition, um, beautiful baby girl. So uh, thank you for bringing her and sharing her. And um, hopefully as time goes on, we'll get the opportunity to meet the rest of your beautiful family. Um, <clears throat> so. Wow, as I share what God has laid on my heart for me to share with you this morning, um, my prayer, my prayer really is, and I, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, is that you will find true peace that surpasses all understanding. True peace that surpasses all understanding. If I were to give a title to my message today, the title would be Them Their Storms. Them Their Storms. You see, we are in a season 
right now of storms in our lives like you would not believe. And I'm not just talking about me being in this season of storms, but I'm talking about globally. Storms are raging everywhere, everywhere. We have snowstorms, ice storms. We've got uh, rainstorms, hail storms. Um, we've got emotional storms, financial storms, mental health storms, physical sickness storms. Storms are a raging, them their storms. You see, we might be going through a bunch of storms and that's the whole thing about a storm. Whenever a storm rages, it's a seasonal thing. Storms come and storms go. But when storms are present, they seem the, to be the only thing that you can focus on. Why? Because storms bring fear, storms bring doubt. Some people, storms bring excitement. Some people are storm chasers, right? They will literally know that a um, tornado is raging and they'll chase it to see which, what it's going to do and what it's going to go, where it's going to go. Storms bring all kinds of emotions, all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of processes. Them, their storms. Most recently, I've had a number of personal storms in my life. And the storms have been of many. I've had a storm where a family member of mine was murdered and the case was closed for years. And now they found the person that's done it or we believe that's done it. It's a storm. I have an uncle who has cancer and is lying in the hospital suffering. It's a storm. I have someone who was like an aunt suddenly die, totally unexpected this past few weeks, few days ago, shocked us all, sudden storm. I had a family member who was out with the family at a cabin and one of the people had a horrific seizure, turned three different shades in color. The family was out at a remote place, didn't even know the address to get help. Help, help, there's a storm. I have a family member who's in Texas, two of them. One of them, the roof is caved in of the house. Water is everywhere. They don't know what to do. Nobody's coming to help. Folks are taking vacations and closing down their phone lines and just leaving the tenants to decide where we go from here. There's a storm raging. I have family members also who are living in zero temperature, degrees temperature, because the power's not coming on for Another week when I last spoke to them, almost a week. I can't get in touch with them, don't know where they are. Storms, them their storms. I have a family member who's dealing with some severe depression and mental health issues, pretty much near homelessness. We don't know what to do. We wanna help, suicidal. Them their storms them their storms. Why do I share this? Because I know for a fact that many of you under the sound of my voice today are going through some storms in your own right. That there are situations and there are circumstances that are raging out of control in your life. And we're looking to the author and the finisher of our faith and saying, Lord, help. We don't know what to do. 
For if it's for not you, Lord, if it was not for you, we would die. But God says, no, I have some promise for you. I have promise. So let's read briefly about the storm that happened in Job's life. You all know the story of Job, right? Everybody talks about Job, but no one wants to go through what Job went through. And I, I don't blame them. I don't either. But we learn a lot from Job's story. So let's go ahead and look at our Bibles, Job 1, 13 through 22. I'm reading NIV, Job 1 through 13. Job chapter 1, 13 through 22. And it says, one day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby. The Sabians attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this, Job's, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Job was clearly in a storm. Now, you might say, well, goodness, what in the world can we get out of that? It seems like Job would just be at a point of helplessness. But you know what Job did? Job said, basically, I'm paraphrasing. I didn't come into this world with nothing and I ain't leaving with nothing. So I'm gonna praise my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the midst of the storms, y'all, we're going to praise our God. You know why we're going to praise our God? Because no matter what happens in your life, God's intentions towards you are good and not of evil to give you a hope and to give you a future. God has plans for you that are great and abundant. The only thing we need to do to him is turn to him and what? Worship him. Worship him. Worship God in the midst of it all. And let me tell you something. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to worship God in the midst of it all. You're in your home freezing because you ain't had heat for a week. And we're talking about worship God. Or your whole bottom floor is flooded with water, stinking and mildew and everything else. All your food's rotten in the refrigerator because there's no power. Praise God. And you know why we can praise him? Because no matter what goes on around us, God's intentions for us are good and they're favorable. He has a plan. And there is a reason why you are going through this storm. It is to make you into the person that God created you to be. Because guess what? In the beginning, I said storms are seasonal, which means if you're in a storm, you coming out of it. If a storm is raging, it's got to end. They're only seasonal. And you know what else? God makes storms be quiet. God says to the storms, shut up, cease from moving, cease from existing. 
107, Psalms 107, Psalm 107, 29 says, he stilled the storm to a whisper and the waves of the sea were hushed. That's our God. Let's look at Matthew 8, 27 through 23. Matthew 8, 20, excuse me, 23 to, through 27. Matthew 8, 23 through 27. NIV. Jesus steps into harm's way with us. He, he encourages us to trust and follow him in the midst of ferocious circumstances. How? This is how our faith is exercised. Starting at verse 23. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a ferocious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Our God tells the storm to cease. He's doing it in, in this word and he's doing it in your life. He's telling them to cease right now. Believe him, believe God. Tell him, Lord, I know you're making this storm cease. I'm gonna wait on you. So when we get ready to enter into storms, there are things that we can do to prepare. I think about when Moses was getting ready to, um, he was leading the Israelites, right? They had been in the desert and he wasn't gonna get to cross over into this promised land with them, but he prepared them for the next leg, the Joshua generation, right? That was coming in. And so Moses spoke to the children of Israel before he crossed into the land. And he said in Deuteronomy 31, six, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. What did he say to them first of all? First of all, he said, be strong. Okay, well, how do I be strong? How am I to be strong, Pastor Deborah? Do the things that build strength. What builds strength? It's simple. Read your Bible, memorize scripture, pray, and stretch. Stretch, ooh, stretch. Well, how do I stretch? Ooh, how do we stretch? Well, this is how you stretch. You connect and glean from others who can teach you something good and new. I'm gonna say that again. You connect, that means find some positive folks, some that can teach you something and start gleaning. Get on the heels, watch, pay attention. What can I learn from him? What can I learn from her? Ooh, they're a little bit intimidating because they have this or they know that. That's a good thing. Glean from them, connect with them. Ask them if they can mentor you, teach you some things. Amen? Stretch. So that's a part of being strong. How are we to be courageous? Moses said, be courageous. How do we do that? Take risks that lead to development. Take a class, start a hobby, join a, a group or a team. Do a marathon, do a triathlon, something that will force you to get out there and stretch, to get healthy physically. If that's something you know you need to do to grow, do it. Put yourself in a position where you are forced to learn, to grow, and to increase in courage. Courage. Then he says, do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Well, who is them, right? First of all, you got to ask yourself, 
what am I afraid of? What am I terrified of? Is your fear, and listen to me carefully, is your fear from doing something that you know you shouldn't be doing, is that causing fear in your life? Stop doing it. Is your fear, go on fire truck. Is your fear from doing something that you can't control? Let it go. You trying to control something, someone? I use an example about us as older adults trying to run our adult children's lives. That's just, hey, I'm just putting that out there, okay? I know I've had to step back, let my kids be grown and learn to develop and grow and get what they need to get so they can stretch and grow. Can't control everybody and everything. Let it go. What is it? You know what it is. Is your fear from being victimized? Are you allowing yourself to be in a place where you're victimized? If you are, step out of that relationship, get away from that person. Or if you are being victimized and it's out of your control, ask God to bring that one that you can trust and tell them. Tell somebody. Be willing to be transparent. Amen? So who is them? That's what the scripture says, uh, that we don't have to be afraid of them. Who is them? Well, let me give you a couple examples. Them is unhealthy relationships. Them is bad habits. Them is codependent relationships. What's codependent relationships? Relationships that you know that you're in that are not healthy for you or where you're constantly letting somebody pull and suck you dry. And you're saying, I know I should tell them no. I know I said I was gonna stop. I know I need to tell, do it. That's who them is. Unhealthy, bad, codependent. And then you put, you figure out who your dip. Some of your thems are not those things. But you can certainly go before God and I'm, I guarantee you, he'll show you what your dims are. Amen. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't leave him. Amen. God will never leave you or forsake you. Don't leave him. Amen. Ask God to put people in your life that will help you and then ask for help. Sometimes we just don't ask. Don't be afraid to ask, just ask for help from healthy people. You know who those, those people are. You know who you've watched and admired from afar. Someone that would be willing to tell you the truth, even though it might not be comfortable, but you know it's gonna help you grow. In Psalm 37, excuse me, 34, I'm just, my goodness, what's up with the scriptures today? Psalm 34, 17 through 20, 34, 17 through 20. Uh, this is NIV. It says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Amen. That's God's word and promise. You see, we who are in Christ, when we cry out to the Lord, guess what? He hears us. He hears us. I remember years ago when I was not living for the Lord. And I would pray, right? And I would be, Lord, help me, help me. I'd, I'd do something I knew I shouldn't have did and I'd be caught up in a bad way. And I promise you, it felt like my prayers were hitting the ceiling. And they were. I wasn't ready to surrender to Christ. I just wanted to get out of that situation for that time. God knew my heart. But when I turned my life over to Christ and I said, Lord, 
I cry out to him now, help me. He knows that my heart is turned toward him. Turn your heart to Jesus, surrender it to him. And he will hear your prayers and he will answer. Now, the answer may not always be yes, because he'll know if it's, if it's meant for it to be a yes answer, but he definitely will, will protect you and pull you out of harm's way because God is faithful. And everything that happens to, to your life that seems like it's hurt you or been uh, harmful, God will use for your good. So just remember, he's right there with us when our hearts are broken. And if you have a broken heart, anybody got a broken heart today? Believe that God is right there with you. He belongs to those who have trouble and you are already delivered when you are his child. And then have you ever asked God if he knows? Have you ever asked him that? God, do you know? Do you really know what's going on? You can ask him that, even though you may know he does. Ask him. Dialogue with him. There are no contingencies when you are in Christ. You are loved unconditionally. So in Nahum 1.7, the word says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Okay. So I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to go down to some benefits here. Okay. And, and, and this will be, I will conclude my message here. Um, it is important to create a sacred space for God. Amen. Create a sacred space for God somewhere in your house, somewhere in your head, somewhere in your mind, but technically a physical space is ideal. When we create sacred space for God, we, number one, can rest under his shadow. When we create a space for God, we, number two, become, he becomes our refuge in our fortress. God becomes our reg, refuge in our fortress. Another benefit of creating space for God is that our enemies fall right in front of us. They will fall at our left, at our right, but they won't come near us. And then number four, God will command his angels to protect you from hurt, harm and danger. Number five, God will not allow danger to touch you. Not only will it fall, people fall around you that have been harmed, but it will not touch you. Danger will not touch you. Number six, God will deliver you and honor you. And number seven, you will be blessed with long life and eternal salvation. And you're probably saying, Pastor Deborah, how do you know that? Well, I ran out of time, so I wanted to give you these benefits, but I want you to do something on your own today. Read Psalm 91, one through 16, and that will highlight all of the benefits that I just shared with you. Psalm 91, one through 16. These will give you the benefits of creating a sacred, sacred space because you will be dwelling under the shelter of the most high. Amen? All right, so some questions to consider. One, what storms are you facing in life? Two, what might you do to calm the storm? What are some things you can do? Three, what scriptures bring you comfort in the midst of life's storms? Think about the word. What word brings you comfort? And then four, how will you detect that a storm is raging in the life of another? We are our brothers and our sisters keeper. How do you detect when something's 
going on in someone else's life. Amen? Amen. So we don't have a call to action um, this week. I'm taking a break on that. But I do have something I want you to do. I, we're not going to post it or not going to talk about it or any of that. This is something fun for you to do. I want you to go to YouTube. And I want you to listen to the little boy that's singing. Don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing going to be all right. Just put little boy singing, don't worry, it'll come up, all right? I want you to, to look at that and I want you to listen to it. That's all, I want you to be blessed by it, okay? All right, so for our announcements, number one, go to the website. Any questions, any concerns, anything you need to know, go to the website www.mountaincreek.org. When you get there, submit your prayer requests. Storms are a raging, y'all. Submit those prayer requests, put them in there. Prayer changes things. I've seen it happen. Y'all have been praying with somebody, uh, for somebody with me. I've been asking for prayer and guess what? Things have been changing even within the last 24 hours. I wanna share that with you. So put them in there because it makes a difference. Submit your prayer requests. If they're confidential, that's okay. I will pray, just me. I'll let make sure I see it and I will be praying for you. Uh, fellowship and prayer with Suzanne on Mondays. That's fellowship and prayer with Suzanne on Mondays. That's our connection group. Go to the website and you can get connected right in and show you exactly what to do to be a part of that group every Monday. And then our meet and greet is every Sunday at 10.05, right here on Zoom. Just come in there, hang out with folks, tell them you love them and get some interaction and fun going. And then Wednesday, we have our new study group six week video based series to learn how to recognize open doors to be encouraged to step out on faith and embrace all of the extraordinary opportunities that await god has things for you it's called all the places to go how will you know oh i love it god will show you so peak your growth your interest and start stepping out with this new study group all the places to go how will you know and then finally going deeper. We go deeper after service every Sunday at 1115. If you're interested in going deeper, talking about the service, meaning the word and what, what you receive from God, put send me link in the post and you can be a part of it. All right? All right, that's what I have for you today. I just want all of you to know that in the midst of it all, God is on the throne. We again, thank the Rays for coming. I encourage you to go to our website and read there's different information you can find, learn about the Rays and what they're doing. And um, we also sent out some information, read that. And then you may be interested in contributing to uh, supporting them. We want to continue to, we do support them as a church. We want to continue doing that. So thank you so much, Leroy and Amanda for coming. All right, and as far as the rest of you all go, all of you mountain creekers, <laughs> and you're a mountain creaker if you're in here. If you've been listening and joining in and um, hearing the word, tuning in, we embrace you, okay? We're all one. It's not a us and them. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you. Be encouraged. And I say, God, please keep us safe. Cover us. Protect us from all the storms that would try to take us out. Keep us, oh God, under your wing and protect us. Use us until it's time for us to meet again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
God bless you. Have a fabulous week.